Hello, here we are for some more Wintersmith, written by Sir Terry Pratchett. Should we pick it up where we left off? Let's do that. <laughs> One afternoon, when the sky was growing cold, there was a frantic knocking on Nanny's door. It turned out to be caused by Anna Grammer, who almost fell into the room. She looked terrible and her teeth were chattering. Nanny and Tiffany stood up by the fire, but she started talking before her teeth had warmed up. Curls, she managed. Oh dear, thought Tiffany. What about them? Said, she said. What about them? She said, as Nanny Og hurried in from the kitchen with a hot drink. M m trees and skulls. Yeah, what about them? Anna Grammer took a swig from the mug. What did you do with them? She gasped, cocoa dribbling down her chin. Buried them? Oh no, why? They were skulls. You can't just leave skulls lying about. Anna Grammer looked around wildly. Can you lend me a shovel then? Anna Grammer, you can't dig up Miss Treason's grave. But I need some skulls, Anna Grammer insisted. The people there, well... It's like the olden days. I whitewashed that place with my own hands. Have you any idea how long it takes to whitewash over black? They complained. They won't have anything to do with crystal therapy. They just frown and say that Miss Treason gave them sticky black medicine that tasted horrible but worked. And they keep on asking me to sort out stupid little problems. And I don't have a clue what they're going on about. And this morning there was this old man who's dead. And I've got to lay him out and sit up with him tonight. Well, I mean, they're so... Yuck! Tiffany glanced at Nanny Og, who was sitting in her chair and puffing gently on her pipe. Her eyes were gleaming. When she saw Tiffany's expression, she winked and said, I'll leave you girls to have a little chat, shall I? Yes, please, Nanny. And don't listen at the door. To a private conversation? Oh, the very idea, said Nanny, and went into the kitchen. Will she listen? said Anna Grammer. I'll just die if Mistress Weatherwax finds out. Tiffany sighed. Did Anna Grammar know anything? Of course she'll listen, said Tiffany. She's a witch. But she said she wouldn't. She'll listen, but she'll pretend she hasn't and she won't tell anyone. It's her cottage after all. Anna Grammar looked desperate. And on Tuesday, I've probably got to go and deliver a baby out in some valley somewhere. And an old woman came and gabbled at me about it. That'll be Mrs. Owlslick's baby. Owlslick's baby, said Tiffany. I did leave some notes, you know. Didn't you read them? I think maybe Mrs. Irwaj tidied those notes away, said Anna Grammer. You should have looked at them. It took me an hour to write them all down, said Tiffany reproachfully. Three pieces of paper. <sighs> Look, calm down. Didn't you learn anything about midwifery? Uh, Mrs. Irwaj said giving birth is a natural action and nature should be allowed to take its course, said Anna Grammer, and Tiffany was sure she heard a snort from behind the kitchen door. I know a soothing chant, though. Well, I expect that will help, said Tiffany weakly. Mrs. Irwaj said that the village women know all about what to do, said Anna Grammer hopefully. She says to trust in their peasant wisdom. Well, Mrs. Obble was the old woman he called, and what she's got is simple peasant ignorance, said Tiffany. She puts leaf mould on wounds if you don't watch her. Look, just because a woman's got no teeth doesn't mean she's wise. It might just mean that she's been stupid for a very long time. Don't let her anywhere near Mrs. Owlslick until after the baby. It's not going to be an easy birth as it is. Well, I know plenty of spells that will help. No, no magic only to take away pain. Surely you know that. Yes, but Mrs. Earwash is... Why don't you go and ask Mrs. Earwash to help you then? Anagramma stared at Tiffany. That sentence had come out a bit louder than intended, and then Anagramma's face slid into what she probably thought was a friendly expression. It made her look a little bit mad. Hey, I've got a great idea, she said, as bright as a crystal that was about to shatter. Why don't you come back to the cottage and work for me? No, I've got other work to do. But you are so good at the messy stuff, Tiff, said Anna Grammer in a syrupy voice. It seems to come naturally to you. I started at the lamin when I was small. That's why small hands can get inside and untangle things. 
And now Anna Grandma had that hunted look she got when she was dealing with anything she didn't immediately understand. Inside the sheep? You mean up its... Yeah, of course. Untangle things? Sometimes the lambs try to get born backwards, said Tiffany. Backwards, said Anna Grandma weakly. And it can be worse if there's twins. Twins, then Anna Grandma said, as if spotting the floor. But look, I've seen lots of pictures of shepherds and sheep, and there's never anything like that. I thought it was all just standing around and watching the sheep eat grass. There were times when you could feel that the world would be a better place if Anna Grandma got the occasional slap round the ear. The silly, unthinking insults, her huge lack of interest in anyone other than herself, the way she treated everyone as if they were slightly deaf and a little bit stupid. It could make your blood boil. But you put up with it because every once in a while you saw through it all. Inside there was this worried, frantic little face watching the world like a bunny watching a fox and screaming at it in the hope that it would go away and not hurt her. And a meeting of witches, who were supposed to be clever, had handed her this stead in which would be a hard job for anyone. It just didn't make sense. Nope, didn't make sense. It only happens when there's a difficult lambing, said Tiffany, whilst our mind raced. And that means it's out in the dark and the cold and the rain. Artists never seem to be around then. Funny, hey? Why are you looking at me like that, said Anna Grammer, like I'm not here? Tiffany blinked. All right, she thought, how am I supposed to deal with this? Look, I'll come and I'll help you with the laying out, she said as calmly as she could manage. And I expect I can help you with Mrs. Auslick. Or ask Petulia. She's good. But you'll have to do the watching by yourself. Sitting up all night with a dead person, said Anna Grandma, and shivered. Take a book to read, said Tiffany. I suppose I could draw a circle of protection around the chair, Anna Grandma said. No, no magic, said Tiffany. Mrs. Irwaj must have told you this. But a circle of protection, it draws attention. Something might turn up and see why it's there. Don't worry, it's just to make the old people happy. Um, when you say something might turn up, Anna Grandma began. Tiffany sighed. All right, I'll sit up with you just this once, she said. Anna Grandma beamed. And as for skulls, said Tiffany, just wait a moment. She went upstairs and got the boffo catalogue, which she'd hidden in her old suitcase. She came back with it carefully rolled up and handed it over. Don't look at it now. Wait until you're alone. You might find it gives you ideas, OK? I'll come and meet you at about seven o'clock tonight. When Amna Grandma had gone, Tiffany sat and counted under her breath. When she'd got to five, Nanny Og came and vigorously dusted a few ornaments before saying, Oh, has your little friend gone, eh? Do you think I'm being silly? said Tiffany. Nanny stopped pretending to do housework. I don't know what you're talking about, not having listened. But if I had been listening... I'd think you won't get any thanks. That's what I'd think. Granny shouldn't have meddled, said Tiffany. Shouldn't have, her, huh? said Nanny, her face blank. I'm not stupid, Nanny, said Tiffany. I've worked it all out. Worked it all out, have you? Well, there's a clever girl, said Nanny Og, sitting down in a chair. And what is it that you've worked out, then? This was going to get difficult. Nanny was usually cheerful all the time. When she went solemn, like she was now, it could make you a bit nervous. But Tiffany pressed on. I couldn't take on a cottage, she said. I can do most of the everyday stuff, but you need to be older to run a stead in. There's things people won't tell you if you're only 13, hat or no hat. But Granny put it about that she was suggesting me, and so everyone saw it as a contest between me and Anna Grammar, right? And they chose her because she's older and sounds really competent. And now it's falling apart. It's not her fault she was taught magic instead of witchcraft, after all. Granny just wants her to fail so that everyone will know that Mrs. Irwaj is the bad teacher. And I don't think that's very good. Oh, you wouldn't be too quick to decide what it is Esme Weatherwax wants if I was you, said Nanny Og. I don't say a word, mind you. You go off. You help your friend if you want. But you still got to work for me, OK? That's only fair. How's your feet? I feel fine, Nanny. Thank you for asking. More than a hundred miles away, Mr. Fusel Johnson knew nothing about Tiffany, Nanny Og, or indeed anything very much except for clocks and watches, which he made for a living. 
He also knew how to lime wash a kitchen, which was an easy and cheap way to get a nice white look even if the stuff was a bit runny. And therefore, he had no idea why several handfuls of the white powder fountained up out of the mixing bowl before he could add the water, hung in the air for a moment like a ghost, and vanished up the chimney. In the end, he put it down to too many trolls moving into the area. This wasn't very logical, but such beliefs generally aren't. And the winter smith thought, lime enough to make a man. That night, she sat up with Anagrammer and old Mr. Tissett, except he was lying down because he was dead. Tiffany, Tiffany had never liked watching over the dead. It wasn't exactly something you could like. It was always a relief when the sky turned grey and the birds started to sing. Sometimes in the night, Mr. Tissett made little noises, except, of course, it wasn't Mr. Tissett who'd met death hours ago. It was just the body he'd left behind, and the sounds were made that were really no different from the noises made by an old Hoyt house as it cooled down. It was important to remember these things around two o'clock in the morning, vitally important when the candle flickered. Anagramma snored. No one with a nose that small should be able to snore that loud. It was like ripping planks. Whatever evil spirits might be around on this night, the sound would probably be scaring them well away. It wasn't the part that was so bad, and Tiffany could live with the It was the gap in between them. After the had wound up, but before the long let out of that really got on her nerves. It was never the same length twice. Sometimes it was one right after the other. And then there might be a huge gap after the ng 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 that Tiffany found herself holding a breath while she waited for the <laughs> It wouldn't have been so bad if Anagramma had stuck to one length of pause. Sometimes she stopped altogether and there was blessed silence until a festival of blorts began, usually with a faint ng 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 lip smacking sound as Anagramma shifted position in her chair. Where are you, flower lady? What are you? You should be sleeping. The voice was so faint that Tiffany might not have heard it at all if she hadn't been tensed up waiting for the next... <coughs> and here it came. <coughs> Let me show you my world, flower lady. Let me show you all the colours of ice. <coughs> About three quarters of Tiffany thought, Oh no, will he find me if I reply? No, if he could find me, he'd be here. My hand isn't itching. The other quarter thought a god or godlike being is talking to me and I could really do without the snoring anagramma, thank you so much. I said I was sorry, she whispered into the dancing candlelight. I saw the iceberg. It was very mm, nice of you. I have made lots more. Many more icebergs, thought Tiffany. Great big freezing floating mountains that look like me dragging fog banks and snowstorms behind them. I wonder how many ships are going to run into them. You shouldn't have gone to all that trouble, she whispered. Now I am growing stronger. I am listening and I am learning. I am understanding humans. Outside the cottage window a thrush began to sing. Tiffany blew out the candle and grey light crept into the room. Listening and learning. How could a blizzard understand things? Tiffany, flower lady, I am making myself a man. There was a complicated grunting as anagrammas and ran into each other and she woke up. Ah, she stretched, stretching her arms and yawning. She looked around. Well, that all seemed to go very well. Tiffany stared at the wall. What did he mean, making himself a man? Surely he... You didn't fall asleep, did you, Tiffany? said anagramma in what she probably thought was a playful voice. Not even for one tiny little second. What? said Tiffany, glaring at the wall. Oh, no, I didn't. People were moving around downstairs. After a little while, there was a creaking on the stairs and the low door was pushed open. A middle-aged man, looking sheepishly at the floor, uttered, Mum says, would you lay these lights and breakfast? Oh, no, we couldn't possibly take what little you have, Anagramma blank began. Yes, please, that we would be very grateful for said Tiffany, louder and quicker. The man nodded and shut the door. Oh, how could you say that? said Anagramma, as his footsteps creaked down. These are poor people. I thought you would... Shut up, would ye? snapped Tiffany. Just shut up and wake up. These are real people. They're not some kind of... of... of idea. We will go down there 
and we will eat breakfast and we'll say how good it is and then we will thank them and then they will thank us and we will go. And that will mean everyone has done the right thing by custom and that will be what's important to them. Besides, they don't think they are poor because everyone around here is poor, but they're not so poor that they can't afford to do the right things. That would be poor. Anna Grammer was staring at her with her mouth open. Be careful what you say next, said Tiffany, breathing heavily. In fact, don't say anything at all. Breakfast was ham and eggs. It was eaten in polite silence. After that, in the same silence, except that it was outdoors, they flew back to what people would probably always think of as Mrs. Miss Treason's cottage. There was a small boy loitering outside. As soon as they landed, he blurted out, Mrs. Arbel, say the baby's on her way out and you'd give me a penny for going. You've got a bag, have you? said Tiffany, turning to Anna Grammer. Yes, I've got lots. I mean a call-out bag, Anna. You know, you keep it by the door with everything in it if you, you'll need if... Tiffany saw the terrified look on the girl's face. <sighs> OK, you haven't got a bag. We'll just have to go and do the best we can. Give the boy a penny and let's go. Can we get anyone to help if it all goes wrong? Said Anna Grammer as they left the ground. We are the help, said Tiffany simply. And since this is your steading, I'm giving you the really tough job which was keeping Mrs. Obble occupied. Mrs. Obble wasn't a witch, although most people thought she was. She looked like one. That is, she looked like someone who brought everything in the boffo catalogue on the day of the special offer on Harry Warts. And she was mildly crazy and should not have been allowed within a mile of any mother who was going to have her first baby, since she would be very conscientiously telling them, or cackling at them anyway, about everything that could go wrong in a way that made it sound as if it would go wrong. She wasn't a bad nurse, though, once you stopped her putting a leaf mould poultice on everything. Things went noisily and with a certain amount of fuss, but nothing like Mrs. Obble had predicted, and the result was a baby boy, who was not a bouncing baby, but only because Tiffany caught him. Anagramma didn't know how to hold babies. She did look good in a pointy hat, though, and since she was clearly older than Tiffany and did hardly any of the work, the women assumed that she was in charge. Tiffany left her holding the baby, the right way up this time, and looking proud, and began the long flight back through the woods to Tir Nanny Og. It was a crisp evening, but there was a bit of a wind which blew stinging snow crystals off the trees. It was an exhausting journey, Jenny, and very, very cold. He can't know where I am, she repeated to herself as she flew back in the dusk, and he's not very clever. Winter has to end sometime, right? Um, how? said her second thoughts. Miss Tick says you just have to be there, but surely you have to do something else. Well, I suppose I'll have to walk around with my shoes off, Tiffany thought. Everywhere, the second thoughts wondered, as she swerved between the trees. It's probably like being a queen, her third thought said. She just has to sit in the palace and maybe do a bit of driving round in a big coach and waving, and all over a huge kingdom, monarchin is going on. But as she avoided more trees, she also tried to avoid the little scurrying thought that was trying to creep into her mind. Sooner or later, one way or another, he is going to find you. And how can he make himself a man? Ooh, we'll leave it there for tonight. Gosh. What, how, what's your feelings about anagramma? I don't know. I kind, kind of don't like people like that. Like those really lazy ones who actually got a job and they don't know half of quarter of what they're meant to do and yet they're the ones who always end up looking good i suppose you could get a nice bit of self-satisfaction you could be pleased with yourself and really if we're talking philosophically that's what matters isn't it don't worry about what anybody else thinks of you as long as you're proud of the job you've done and i guess tiffany feels proud of the job she's done if she wasn't so um distracted by wintersmith but i i don't know I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply. <laughs> Maybe it's time for me to stop recording for tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow.